friends, welcome to AlertOps video tutorial series. In this video we will be covering the workflows, what they are, how you can use them, and how they can enable you to build out your ideal incident response process. Let's get started. Workflows in AlertOps are designed to facilitate automation in terms of communicating with people and systems. From the standpoint of sending notifications to people, Workflows allow you to conditionally notify individuals that may not be part of your linear path of escalation defined by your escalation rule. If you would need to notify management teams on a certain time interval prior to SLA if the alert is still open or if a monitoring tool sends over specific information that indicates you'd need to additionally notify specific stakeholder users, workflows would be able to do so. From a standpoint of systems, Workflows can leverage configured outbound integration API calls, or webhooks created on the fly to notify external systems. For example, if you'd need to create or update a ticket in an external tool or automate the process of creating incidents and updating them within a status page. Let's jump right in. Here we have a workflow designed to notify certain business partners with recurring updates on a time-based interval. Let's walk through each piece of this workflow. At the top, we've got the workflow name, workflow type, a checkbox to enable, disable, the alert type, whether it is scheduled and the recurrence interval. Let's start with the workflow type. Alert Ops features three types of workflows. Message, delivery attempt, and message thread workflows. Message workflows are those whose conditions can be constructed around a specific message. In alert ops, an alert is a thread of communication or messages. Therefore, a message workflow can be built around the information of a specific message. Delivery attempt workflows are centered around the specifics of the delivery status of a particular message or notification. For example, if a delivery failed and you'd want to notify an administrator you could do so. Message. Thread workflows are the most common type of workflows. Message thread refers to the totality of the thread of messages or the alert object as a whole. These workflows can be built on any of the standard alert fields or any custom fields that would be part of the alert type in question. Therefore, if you'd want to assign a ticket in ServiceNow, for example, when the status of the message thread is assigned, you can do so. Or alternatively, if you had a custom field for data center, and if it was a particular data center that the alert was raised against, you can build logic off of these custom fields as well. The alert type of a workflow determines just that, the type of alert that this workflow will be applicable for. An alert type contains all of the relevant fields that are captured, messaged, or required for a certain type of incident process. For more information, please review our documentation around alert types. The final field we will review at the top section of our workflows are the scheduled checkbox and the recurrence interval. Scheduled effectively indicates a workflow operates on some time-based condition. If you use any time-based condition ensure to have scheduled selected. When the scheduled checkbox is selected the recurrence interval box will automatically appear. The recurrence interval will determine how frequently to recur the workflow in minutes. If you wouldn't like to configure any repetition of the workflow, leave the recurrence interval at zero. In our scenario we see that this is set to 30 meaning that this workflow will fire every 30 minutes provided that the conditions are met. Now that we've covered the configuration settings of workflows, Let's take a look at how workflow conditions are built. Here we have our start conditions. Start conditions are the criteria that must be satisfied in order for a workflow to execute and function similarly to the way filters work within inbound integrations. We see that there are two types of start conditions, match all and match any. Match all conditions act as an and condition. This means that if you match all of the workflow conditions, then the workflow will be triggered, else it won't. Match any conditions act as an or condition. The means that if you match any single workflow condition that is specified, the workflow will trigger. 
In the case that none of the conditions are matched, the workflow will not trigger. The relationship between match all and match any filter conditions is an or condition. Meaning that if all the criteria under the match all conditions or any of the criteria under match any conditions is met, the workflow will fire. In this scenario the workflow will trigger any time the alert isn't closed and the time from beginning is 3 minutes as well as trigger every 30 minutes per hour recurrence interval. In addition to start conditions, any recurring workflow will also have stop conditions. Any time the value for recurrence interval is above zero, stop conditions will appear. Under stop conditions, we have the same logic for match all and match any conditions that can be populated. We see here that in the case the custom field status page latest status is resolved Oregon if the status of the alert is in any of the values of closed, assigned, or cancelled this workflow will stop triggering. Now that we've covered all of our start and stop conditions, let's take a look at actions and the type of actions that we can execute from a workflow. Workflow actions fall under one of four categories. 1. Send message workflow actions do just that. They leverage a specific escalation rules notification policy to notify a certain groups or individual users. You also have the option to send a notification to the sender of the alert for a manual alert, the owner of the alert, the original recipients, as well as create the message as a new standalone alert. 2. Cancel delivery workflow actions offer the ability to cancel all subsequent notifications from executing from that thread or alert. Depending on the workflow type subsequent notification deliveries can be cancelled at an individual user level or for the alert as a whole. 3. The third type of workflow action is send webhook. This allows you to send a basic API call to an external system to push information or trigger some automation on that system. 4. The last type of workflow actions are also used interact with external tools via API. Outbound service notification actions allow triggering an outbound integration action that is configured in your alert ops environment. These are more robust at simple webhooks as they have the ability to completely modify the headers, authentication, and capture response data back from the external tool. It is important to note that depending on the different workflow type delivery attempt, message, and message thread there are limitations on what actions can be triggered. Thank you for taking a look at an overview of workflows with AlertOps. For more videos please check out our knowledge base or YouTube.